Hello, we are now in part two of the section six to implement the TO2 SAM practice. We continue with our processes in TO2. We begin with operation management. This process ensures that operational processing is using software assets within scope in a way by which it supports SAM requirements during the day-to-day -day operations. There are several operational management activities, which are used by the end users as well as the IT operators. Uh, for using the IT assets. This can be, for example, taking backups and other housekeeping tasks, monitoring operations for exception conditions of the IT infrastructure, how the software is being used, how its performance, and so on. Also optimizing uh, activities such as adjusting the configuration parameters, which could be certain performance tuning aspects of the software. Also integrating with other item requirements such as compliance with policies, and integrating between the operational processes and SAM processes such as license management to optimize the deployment of licenses. We are showing here the, the service catalog versus the, um, the request fulfillment rather than calling it versus. We have the service catalog for SAM which uh, indicates what all software services are available and those are in the reflected in the SAM asset inventory for the software assets in scope. And they are connected with the contract database. However, the ones which are enabled for use and reuse will be in the SAM asset repository. Therefore, the request fulfillment process for the users will have to work with the uh, enabled SAM asset repository. If an asset is not available in the repository, then the request fulfillment may not be able to fulfill the request. Therefore, there should be sufficient assets in the asset repository which are enabled for use and reuse so that the request fulfillment process does not get hindered. This asset repository is the available license pool. Quickly looking at the service request management process, it takes in a request from a user. Here we are looking at only the software requests. The request is fulfilled, but it has to go through the initiation of the request to understand what the request is. It needs to be approved in some way, uh, financially or for confidentiality, etc., and then it will be fulfilled. So note that service requests are a normal part of service delivery. It's not a failure or degradation of the service. There is a lot more information available about such request processes in the ITIL4 uh, request uh, management process or practice as they call it in ITIL 4. Some good recommendations about service requests are they need to be standardized and automated so that they are easier to process and for the users and for increasing the user satisfaction based on the faster response time and consistent processing. Limit the approvals because users usually don't like to be told that please obtain approval. So if that can be minimized, that will be really good. But expectations has to be set as to when the request will be fulfilled in a realistic way. They have to be predefined and agreed. I'd, improvements need to be done periodically. For example, it could be some more or automation or uh, minimizing of the approvals. And service requests should be separate from other requests. For example, a change request or request to resolve an incident. And define the authorization. Who needs to authorize what kind of requests? Some could be straight away processed, but some may require authorization due to confidential information needs or uh, approval, financial approval uh, before the request may be fulfilled. For example, install a software license, maybe a license has to be purchased. So service requests relies a lot on well-defined processes and proper tracking and automation tools so that the user can be kept informed. And even the service request team will be aware of the progress of the request and following up with other departments as the need arises. Every request should be understood for its complexity. They should have specific pre-tested steps to fulfill. There should be expectations set, as I mentioned earlier, on the realistic timeframes, et cetera, on the process clarification to the users, and uh, self-service should, should be enabled for users while still allowing them to call up the request desk. Existing models can really be useful and they can be improved rather than starting from scratch to fulfill the request. Another one is retirement management. In which the software assets uh, will be removed 
from their current use with subsequent repurposing, recycling, disposal where appropriate in accordance with company policy and meeting all record keeping requirements. So many times devices are thrown away with little or no regard to the intellectual property that resides on those hard drives. So when such disposing happens, such devices could have large amount of software on them and that could be recycled. Otherwise those licenses will be lost. So for example, when I use, for example, an MS project license or MS office license on my laptop, uh, if my laptop uh, has to be uh, discarded due to too many technical problems, then I would try to not to buy again another license for MS project and MS office, but I would try to use, uninstall them from the older laptop if possible, and then uh, uh, redeploy them by downloading it online from the software publisher and put it on the newer laptop. 